Uh, I welcome you all in today's student uh, clinical uh, pathological conference. The first case will be discussed by Dr. Saurish Datta, who will be discussing the clinical aspect, and the pathology will be discussed by Dr. So I will be presenting the first case. My index patient is Mr. G.S. Uh, he is 52 years old, male. He is a policeman. He was a policeman by occupation. He was a resident of Fatehgarh Sahib, Punjab. He was admitted on in PGI on 11th of uh, October 2021, and he died on 11th of October 2021. Time of admission was 12:02 uh, p.m. and time of death was 10:40 p.m. Duration of stay at Hall A EMOPD was 10 hours. Chief, compl uh, chief complaints, he had presented to uh, EMOPD with the following chief complaints, bilateral pedal edema for last 10 days, fever for last 7 days, shortness of breath for 5 days, and decreased urine output for the last 3 days. History of present illness, uh, he had bilateral edema for the last 10, 10 days. It was progressive, pitting initially in the dependent position of the lower limbs, later on extending up to bi bilateral knees. Fever. He, uh, he had fever for seven days. It was low grade, intermittent. Maximum documented fever was 101 degree Fahrenheit. It was not associated with any chills and rigors. History of present illness: uh, shortness of breath. Duration of uh, duration was five days. It was insidious in onset, rapidly progressive. It progressed from MMRC one to four within five days. It was associated with cough. There was no expectoration or associated uh, orthopnea. PND or hemopsis or chest pain. He had complaints of decreased urine output for the last three days. Uh, his documented urine output for the last 24 hours before admission to PGI was 300 ml. There was no associated complaints of dysuria, hematuria, or abdominal or pelvic tenderness. In the past history, he was diagnosed with type 2 DM uh, four years back. He was on insulin plus OHA therapy. However, he was poorly compliant. He had history of intermittent swelling for the last two to three years. However, there is no history of coronary artery disease, hypertension, COPD, pulmonary TB, or any history of hematemesis, malina, altered sensorium, or abdominal distension. Treatment history is not available with us. Personal history, uh, he was an avid al alcohol consumer. He had consumed serogenic doses for the last 20 years. His last alcohol intake was 10 to 15 days before uh, admission to PI. He was a non-smoker. He had no significant family history. On clinical examination, he was conscious oriented. He had severe pallor. He was edematous. His BP was 75 50. Uh, pulse rate was 110. Uh, saturation at room air was 88%, which increased to 93% on venturi mask, FIO2 of 30%. He was febrile at the time of admission. Systemic examination, uh, CNS, he, uh, uh, higher, his higher mental, mental functions were normal. He had no focal neurological deficits. CVS was uh, S1, S2 and audible. In chest, there, he had bilateral diffuse coarse crepitations. Uh, there was no, uh, abdomen was soft, non-tender, and there was no organomegaly. Now the possibilities based on history and clinical examination. Among the past history, we have poorly compliant type 2 DM, alcohol consumer, uh, intermittent history of pedal edema for the last uh, two to three years. However, he had no associated chest pain, shortness of breath, orthopnea, PND, or history of any history of decreased urine output. Presenting complaints, he had bilateral pedal edema, uh, fever, low grade, shortness of breath, rapidly progressive, and decreased urine output. Clinical examination, he had pallor, pitting pedal edema, hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypoxia, febrile, he was febrile, and he had bilateral coarse crepitations on chest aus auscultation. So the possibilities based on the history and clinical examination are presenting disease will be community likely to be community acquired pneumonia and the underlying disease which is which can be attributed to the intermittent pedal swelling for the last two to three years that can be either chronic kidney disease due, which can be due to this poorly compliant type 2 dm as well as because he was an alcohol consumer and he was a type 2 dm with poorly compliance to therapy he may have uh, decomposed a heart failure uh, on the basis of his uh, alcohol abuse, he can be uh, he can be having chronic liver disease, ethanol related. However, he had no history of uh, abdominal distension or any melina or hematemesis. 
Now coming to the investigations, he was admitted two days uh, uh, before admission to PGI to an outside hospital where it was basic workup was done. His CBC showed uh, on 9th of uh, October showed uh, severe anemia, 5 point, hemoglobin was 5.6 and platelet count was 56,000. In PGI, his count was, uh, he received one unit of PRBC transfusion on 10th from outside. Uh, in, P in PGI, his hemoglobin was a 7.8, platelet was 53,000. Uh, However, there was no leukocytosis. He had hypertemia and hypokalemia. In PGI, hypokalemia was corrected, but hyponatremia was persisting. He had uh, increased uh, urea and creatinine levels. Uh, among the LFT, it was normal from outside. However, in PGI, uh, one value of albumin is 1.65. In PGI also, the coagulopathy was detected first time. He has a PTI of 38%. RBS done outside was uh, 165 on 10th, and in PGI, it was done, it was found to be 179. In a, uh, he, he was evaluated outside for urine RME. He, it was showing pulses for 30 to 35 but high power field and appearance of the urine was turbid. However, in PGI, uh, urine RME showed sugar nil, protein one plus and blood three plus. ABG was done in LA, uh, which showed pH of 7.17, uh, bicarbonate of 7.4, uh, oxygen saturation of 75.3, sodium of 129, it was a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Anion gap was around 24. Uh, ketones were not available. He also, based on the PO2 value, he also had type 1 respiratory failure with a P by F ratio of 160. Uh, investigations done in uh, EMOPD PGI. Uh, ultrasound showed liver. Uh, it was normal in size, uh, outline, and echo texture. Portal vein was also normal. However, he had mild splenomegaly. Kidneys were, uh, right kidney was 12.1 with uh, left kidney was 12.5 with raised ecogenous, cortical ecogenicity in both of them. However, CMG was maintained. There was right nephrolithiasis. This is the X-ray in EMOPD. It showed uh, no plural effusion. However, there can be mild cardiomegaly uh, in this. And however, there was bilateral diffuse airspace opacities on, uh, in the lung parenchyma. The ECG. ECG showed low voltage complexes with poor progression of the R wave. Course and management. Patient uh, on 9th, patient was admitted to outside hospital. In view of shortness of breath, he was given O2 supplementation and was started on injection piptas and levofloxacin. In view of severe anemia, one unit of PRBC was transfused. Iotropic support was initiated uh, for hypotension. He was also given IV bicarbonate or an IV calcium gluconate. However, blood gas analysis of these days not available with us. In view of worsening azotemia and hypertension, he was referred to PI. He was admitted to Hall A at 12.02 p.m. He was continued on injection peptides and non-adrenaline support. Fluid resuscitation was attempted. O2 support was continued with venturi mask, FIO2 of 30% at 9 liter per minute. ABG showed high anangia metabolic acidosis and type 1 respiratory failure. Nephrology consultation was taken. Correction of acidosis was attempted with sodium bicarbonate infusion. In view of metabolic acidosis, azotemia, decreased urine output, and the possibility of fluid overload based on the chest X-ray, RRT was planned. However, in the terminal event, uh, on uh, 10, 10 p.m., he patient suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. CPR was started as per ACLS protocol, and the patient was intubated and given IPVV. However, despite best efforts, resumption of spontaneous circulation could not be achieved, and patient was declared dead at 10.40. Now, Coming to the clinical database, in the history, we have the type 2 diabetes mellitus, poorly compliant to therapy, alcohol consumer, in serogenic doses, symptoms, bilirubinemia, fever, shortness of breath, decreased urine output. And signs, we have hypertension, paler, edema, tachypnea, hypoxia, coarse capillations over bilateral lung fields, and he was febrile. On the investigations, he had anemia with thrombocytopenia, azotemia, hyponatremia, metabolic acidosis, type 1 respiratory failure. He had pustules and hematuria in urine, uh, bilateral infiltrates on chest X-ray, low voltage ECG, and on ultrasound, he had mild splenomegaly and night nephrolithiasis. Now the discussion will be based on the basic disease, which may be type 2, which is type 2 DM, uh, 
acute kidney injury versus acute and chronic kidney disease, which is which may be decay related, and the sepsis and sepsis sources. Most likely sources were community acquired pneumonia, urosepsis based on the pustules in urine, as well as be, taking into account the seasonal uh, patient has presented in October and he had anemia and thrombocytopenia. Tropical illness can also be, cannot also be ruled out. Among the complications, uh, we have shock, type 1 failure, kidney injury, coagulopathy, thrombocytopenia, and anemia. In the terminal event, we have sudden cardiac death. Shock, now coming to the shock. Based on the presence of fever, cough, but with no expectoration, and uh, presence of uh, possible source of infection in the form of erosive, as well as the community acquired pneumonia, and presence of ongoing uh, uh, ongoing uh, organ dysfunction, we, I keep the possibility of septic shock as the pri primary responsible for the shock. However, we cannot also rule out cardiogenic shock in this patient. We, Take into account his di history of diabetes and alcohol abuse, as well as history of intermittent pillar edema for the last two, three. In the acute kidney injury uh, versus the acute and chronic kidney disease, it, uh, the uh, rising azotemia can be attributed to renal, renal uh, maybe likely due to uh, uh, sepsis related acute tubular necrosis. However, hypoperfusion renal injury cannot also be ruled out. In the type 1 respiratory failure, the most likely possibility is community acquired pneumonia based on the symptomology and the chest X ray findings. However, a close differential will be ARDS, which, is sepsis, which may be sepsis related or tropical illness related. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema cannot also be ruled out in this case. However, there was no plural effusion in this. Now, if the patient is having community acquired pneumonia, then what is the etiological agent? Based on the presence of uh, poorly compliant diabetes as well as alcohol abuse, the bacteria will be a likely possibility and rapidly disease, bacteria will be a likely possibility. However, fungus can also not be ruled out. Uh, in, the presence, uh, in the presence of COVID pandemic, though among the virus, COVID-19 has to be ruled out. Uh, COVID gene is negative. Regarding the thrombocytopenia, the most likely possibility to me was disseminated intervascular coagulation uh, based on the coagulopathy as well as the thrombocytopenia. However, tropical illness-related mesonic scrub, scrub or related uh, thrombocytopenia cannot also be ruled out. Another likely uh, possibility will be chronic liver disease, ethanol-related. However, there is no ultrasound, uh, no, there is no surface modularity or any raised ecotexture as is seen in the ultrasound. Dr. Sarish, please wind up. Yes. Coagulopathy, I will also, uh, also attribute it to the disseminated intervascular coagulation as PT and APT were both raised. However, chronic liver disease has to be ruled out. In the ISTS DIC scoring system, uh, because of uh, lack of prevention levels as well as loss of, uh, lack of D-dimer levels, we cannot consider this as over DIC. Anemia, anemia is likely to be multifactorial, likely to be anemia of chronic disease as well as nutritional. However, GI loss due to chronic liver disease or thrombotic and TMA or secondary HLH cannot also be ruled out. One possibility, rare possibility that can be kept is a diffuse alveolar hemorrhage based on the uh, sudden loss, sudden uh, detection of anemia in the patient as well as the infiltrates in the chest X-ray. Your diagnosis, please. The terminal event, sudden cardiac death, the possibility was li likely to be cardiac arrhythmia related. It can be hypoxic, metabolic acidosis related, my myocardial infarction, and or pulmonary thromboembolism. The final diagnosis was cardiac arrhythmia, sepsis, community acquired pneumonia, urosepsis, sep septic shock, type 1 respiratory failure, disseminated intervascular coagulation, acute kidney injury versus acute and chronic kidney disease. Acute was sepsis related, chronic was diabetic kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, with suspicion of chronic liver disease is related. Thank you very much. Please join me here. I would like to invite the SR, treating SR for his final comments. Uh, good morning to all. Sir, this patient was admitted in EMOPD with short history of fever, shortness of breath, and decreased urine output. Based on uh, history and Based on history and uh, available investigations, we kept the possible diagnosis of uh, community acquired pneumonia with sepsis and AKA and septic shock. One more possible diagnosis is a tropical illness due to fever, thrombocytopenia, and AKA. 
So we started treatment according to sepsis protocol and uh, um, dialysis plan due to um, azotemia and oliguria, but patient developed sudden cardiac arrest. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would now like to invite comments from the audience. Dr. Neeta, kindly in the autopsy bar. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Today I am going to present the pathological part of uh, case number 30422. A 52-year-old male uh, with cardi uh, clinical diagnosis of cardiac arrhythmia, severe metabolic acidosis, acute kidney injury, diabetes mellitus, and chronic alcoholism. A complete autopsy was done uh, in which the prosectors noted the serous cavities are within normal limit. Coming to the organ complex comprising of bilateral kidney, bilateral ureter, urinary bladder, and uh, IVC and abdomen, part of abdominal aorta. The bilateral kidneys uh, weighs around 420 grams, which was heavy and enlarged. On closer view, the outer surface of kidney shows uh, superficial cortical scars and persistence of fetal lobulation with the large pale area over the uh, upper pole of the right kidney. Uh, this is the microphotograph sh uh, showing from the uh, superficial cortical scars showing the glomerulosclerosis overall around 10 to 15 percent and the interstitial fibrosis, in interstitial inflammation. Uh, these are the panel of images showing the uh, changes in the glomeruli which shows periglomerular fibrosis and the uh, nodular uh, lesion present uh, within the glomeruli, which is better highlighted in the PAS stain, uh, which is bright pink positivity, uh, acellular and surrounding by the capillary endothelial cells, which is compressing the uh, uh, capillaries in the periphery. However, the capillary loop were patent, and it is also highlighted in the zone stain and empty stain, suggesting the KW lesions. Further, uh, glomerular shows uh, the uh, increase in mesangial matrix and uh, increase in cellularity, and the presence of uh, occasional presence of capsular drop was noted uh, hanging on the Bowman's capsule, and uh, there was the hyalinization of the uh, efferent arterioles and the interstitial arterioles, which are better highlighted as bright pink positivity in the PS staining, and here we can see the uh, capillary basement membrane thickening also. Globular basement membrane thickening. Now coming to the larger artery, uh, showing the uh, internal thickening, which uh, which was not more than the thickness of the media, which is better highlighted in the EVG stain. At some part, the reduplication of the internal elastic lamina was also noted. Uh, here, the uh, mild to moderate interstitial inflammation was noted with the features of acute tubular injury in the form of loss of uh, nucleus of the proximal convoluted tubules. And on PS staining, we can see the uh, periglomerular fibrosis and the uh, uh, thickening of the tubular basement membrane, suggesting of the tubular atrophy. Now coming to the uh, bilateral ureter and the urinary bladder, uh, the uh, distal portion of the right ureter was irregularly dilated and microscopically it showed uh, the flattening of the lining epithelium with the areas of uh, inflammation and on cutting open the urinary bladder showing the uh, mucosa uh, with, uh, filled with exudates and areas of ulceration and hemorrhage, uh, which in microscopic views showing the ulcer formation, uh, congested vessels and the marked inflammation. And uh, uh, we cut open the dilated part of the ureter. Uh, we found the necrotic uh, slurs present uh, inside the lumen of the uh, ureter, which on microscopy shows the collection of nuclear debris, neutrophils, and some crystalloid materials, which are better highlighted in the bone cosa stain, and is by reference in the polarizer light, suggesting of the calcium oxalate crystals. Uh, on cutting open the bilateral kidney, we can see the uh, dilation of the pelvic alicial uh, system uh, with uh, collection of these uh, greedy concretions uh, and multiple abscess formation present uh, over bilateral kidneys. Uh, and the section from uh, the representative part showed the uh, 
collection of abscess within the cortex, which on higher view showing the uh, collection of neutrophils with some crystalloid materials and a few bacterial colonies which uh, was positive on gram stain suggesting of gram negative bacteria. Summarizing the urinary system finding is diabetic nephropathy glomerular class 3, IFTA score 2, arteriolar hyalinosis score 2, arteriosclerosis score 1, with nephro and ureterolithiasis of calcium oxalate type uh, leading to acute pyelonephritis with pyogenic abscess and acute and chronic cystitis. Now coming to another organ complex comprising of liver, C loop of duodenum, pancreas, and the spleen. The liver weighed around 1,600 grams, which was heavy, and the outer uh, capsular surface of the liver was smooth. Uh, the uh, pancreas was contracted and small, and the spleen was defluent. Cut surface of liver so, uh, was greasy, and on mil multiple serial slicing of the liver shows large stone present in the left uh, inside the left hepatic duct. Uh, the stone was measuring around 4 into 2 centimeter, which was occluding the lumen. This is the microphotograph from the section of the liver showing the uh, portal fibrosis, which is better highlighted on the Mason's trichome stain, and the diffuse extensive macrovesicular steatosis in all the three zones. Uh, this is the higher power magnification showing the diffuse extensive ma macrovesicular steatosis. In addition, so a, a portal tract shows the minimal inflammation, which on a higher power shows the uh, comprising of uh, lymphocytes and plasma cells. And uh, the ductular proliferation was also noted, which, is, uh, uh, which was better highlighted in the CK7. On cutting open the C, uh, C loop of the duodenum, the bulky ampulla was noted. On dissecting it, we can uh, found that the multiple concretions and stone uh, was present uh, over the length of uh, common bile duct and the pancreatic duct, occluding it, uh, leading to dilation. Uh, and uh, grossly, the pancreas was contracted, and the, uh, on cutting open, uh, th uh, the surface was uh, grayish white uh, in color, formed to feel, and the uh, multiple ducts were noted, dilated, and uh, there was a cyst uh, formation uh, over the tail of the pancreas region, which was three centimeter in diameter, uh, with a wall thickness of two millimeter. This is the microphotograph from the pancreas showing the uh, some few preserved SNI with intra and intubular fibrosis and uh, few dilated ducts uh, con consisting of the inspissated secretions. This is the higher power magnification showing the periductular fibrosis. This is the empty stent showing, uh, showing for the intra and intraductular fibrosis lobular fibrosis, and um, one of the interlobular duct uh, is showing here, uh, containing the inspissated secretions uh, surrounding by the fibrosis, uh, which is better highlighted and the empty stain. Uh, and uh, this intralobular duct uh, was lined by the uh, columnar epithelium, which on PAS Alcine blue stain showed this blue coloration, uh, which indicates the mucinous type of metaplasia of intestinal type. Uh, this is the section from the uh, tail uh, region of the pancreas showing the eyelids, however, shows no amyloid deposition. Uh, and uh, the cut uh, section from the wall of the uh, cyst, uh, which was present above the tail of the pancreas, shows no lining epithelium, however, shows hyalinization and uh, fibrosis on the wall. And uh, there was also the collection of uh, this cholesterol clefts which in higher power so is uh, surrounded by this uh, uh, pigment-laden macrophages uh, and a few giant cells. Uh, and this pigment-laden macrophages was better highlighted one pul uh, on pulse stain, uh, indicating the hemosiderin in nature. Uh, and uh, multiple stones found in the hepatic duct, common bile duct, and the pancreatic duct were sent for stone analysis. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Salmali Bhattacharya, for helping us uh, uh, throughout this uh, stone analysis. And uh, that stone analysis uh, comes with uh, the cholesterol stone. 
coming to spleen the spleen was uh, defluent and the uh, capsular surface was wrinkled and uh, red bulb congestion was seen in the microscopic view and uh, esophagus shows uh, also formation uh, and uh, which is shown microscopically, however, no any organisms were noted, and other part of the GI were grossly and microscopically unremarkable. Summarizing the GI and hepatobiliary system, uh, there was diffuse extensive steatosis, hepatobiliary and pancreatic calculi, chronic pancreatitis with pseudocyst and esophageal ulcer. Coming to a lung, bilateral lung was 1290 gram, which was heavy, and the pleural surface was lustreless, and over the uh, lower lobe of the left lung, there was a large consolidated uh, area formed to fill. Uh, the representative section from that consolidated part shows uh, the alveolar space filled with, uh, filled with neutrophils. Uh, however, uh, all uh, special stain regarding for diagnosis of any organisms were came negative. And this is the pink material uh, lying on the alveolar wall, which is better highlighted on the PS staining, confirming the uh, bright positivity, confirming the hyaline membrane. Coming to heart, heart weighs around 240 gram, which was um, grossly unremarkable. Uh, it was de dissected uh, by modified right inflow outflow uh, modified inflow outflow technique. Uh, right inflow outflow, uh, left inflow outflow was unremarkable, except the grade three atherosclerosis was present in the uh, aorta. Please wind up. Huh. Uh, Coronaries were uh, dissected in which uh, we, uh, we saw the uh, areas of calcification and atherosclerotic plaque. And the, uh, we can see here the left circumflex artery was uh, having the longest course, indicating the uh, predominantly left uh, coronary artery. AC node and AV node was dissected, which was uh, grossly and microscopically unremarkable. If there are no further positive findings, please reach the final diagnosis. Uh, brain, uh, brain was also uh, grossly and uh, microscopically unremarkable. Adrenal shows uh, areas of hemorrhagic necrosis and the uh, areas of inflammation. However, thyroid and bone marrow were unremarkable and testis shows testicular atrophy. My final diagnosis uh, was uh, diabetic nephropathy, glomerular class 3, if I score 2, Arteriolar hyalinosis score 2, arteriosclerosis score 1, with nephroureterolithiasis uh, of calcium oxalate, uh, leading to ascending urinary tract infections, extensive steatosis, hepatobiliary and pancreatic calculi of cholesterol stone, chronic pancreatitis with pseudocyst, and bronchopneumonia with diffuse alveolar damage, exudative phase. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please join me here. So it was ultimately stone, stasis, separation, and then sepsis. Thank you, sir. There are multiple points uh, which we can discuss first, the clinical points, you know, that uh, how could uh, we have, uh, we could have achieved the diagnosis of simple test like a urine routine examination, unfortunately was not done. A simple abdominuria at least could tell you whether there's underlying CKD or not. That's point number one. Number two, I believe the time has come when POCUS, which is the point of care ultrasound, is the need. So I mean, the team of emergency physicians now would include a radiologist for sure in all cases because, you know, if there is abscess there until you drain it out or give antibiotics, the things are not going to improve. Uh, similarly, you know, uh, stones in the hepatic duct, in the CBDs could be picked up. I know that there is no cholangitis. Now, pathology point, which is extremely, extremely important, is the cholesterol stone, which is there in the CBD and in the hepatic duct, with gallbladder being normal. One can always say, you know, there was a... Uh, cholesterol in the gallbladder which actually slipped, but it can slip down, it cannot slip up. So uh, for the first time I'm hearing a cholesterol stone in the hepatic duct. So what is the cause of that? So maybe somebody can answer because time is short. This is a very interesting case and very illustrative. Ma'am, please. Good morning. Well, we were also intrigued by the fact that there was a big stone lying in the hepatic duct on the left side. The gallbladder was not available. The patient had undergone cholecystectomy, so we could not examine that. But there was a definite stone there, and then the entire pancreatic duct was dilated. 
the CBD was dilated and the concretions was present in the entire pancreatic duct. So we don't know whether the, it was pushed up or coming down. It was got stuck there, so it has caused dilatation and all. And there's a multiple factors which has led on to the chronic pancreatitis. So a patient is diabetic, alcoholic, and then there are stones which has caused this pseudocyst formation, chronic fibrosing pancreatitis with dilatation of the entire pancreatic duct system. Sir, for the quick comment, please. Just a short quick comment. Uh, so the cut surface of the stone, dominant part was yellow, which uh, showed that it's probably cholesterol stone. But you can also see some lamination of blackishness. So probably there was some degree of infection which has occurred and causing uh, uh, this kind of coloration. Thank you so much, sir. I invite Dr. Rishav to present the second case. Good morning, everyone. I will be presenting the second case of student CPC. Uh, my case is uh, Mr. K, which is a 40-year-old male, resident of Sangroot, Punjab. Date of admission was 24th of April 2022, and date of death 27th of April 2022. Place of admission, he was admitted in uh, CCU. And duration of hospital stay was around uh, four days. He, uh, his patient presented with history of chest pain, which, was, which started on 21st of April, around 8 p.m. in the night and which was uh, acute in onset, retrosternal, and severe intensity dating to left shoulder. It was associated with uh, sweating and palpitations. And sh uh, subsequently, patient uh, developed shortness of breath, which was progressively increasing, and which was associated with uh, orthopnea. Uh, sub uh, with, uh, one day into the illness, patient developed left upper limb weakness, which was insidious onset, gradually progressed, and which was not associated with facial deviation or weakness of other limbs. Then patient, uh, there was no history of altered mental status, seizure, syncope, there was no history of headache, no history of fever, cough, vomiting, or pain abdomen. There was no history of decreased urine output. Then a patient was referred to PGI emergency. There was no, no significant past history and personal history patient, uh, uh, had, patient was occasionally alcoholic and uh, no, there was nothing uh, uh, significant family history. Uh, the, on examination, patient was uh, conscious oriented, afebrile, and, and found to be in uh, cardiogenic, uh, found to be uh, have, having low BP, and was on inotropic support when he uh, he was received in uh, EMOPD, and uh, SP, he, he was maintaining a uh, SpO2 of 92% on venturi mask, and JVP was raised with cool extremities. On systemic examination, he was uh, found to have soft S1 with pan-systolic murmur was present and uh, bilateral basal crabs were present on uh, respiratory system examination. In power abdomen examination, there was no significant findings. And CNS, he had uh, left upper limb uh, weakness with power of 4 by 5 and hand grip of 40%. Uh, now, investigations. In ECG, patient had uh, QRPV pattern with ST elevations in V1 to V5. In uh, blood investigations, patient had uh, neutrophilic uh, leukocytosis which was uh, which improved from uh, uh, TLC improved from 23,000 to around uh, 13,000, and uh, in uh, in, RF, in RFT patient had drained uh, creatinine with the creatinine of uh, two and uh, urea of 89, which uh, progressed to uh, which deranged to 157 in the end and urea and creatinine to 2.8, and patient also had uh, uh, increased bilirubin levels with total bilirubin raised to four and conjugated to 1.7. Uh, he also had his uh, uh, deranged uh, OTPT, which was uh, which was maximum raised to uh, uh, SGOT of 8,000 and uh, SGPT of around 4,000. And deranged coagulogram was also there with INR of 2. In viral markers, the, uh, HA, uh, HBase AG and NTSC was not active. Procal was uh, 3.07 on, on last uh, on day of death, that is 26th of April. Blood culture initially was uh, sterile, and but uh, uh, you, blood culture showed enterococcal enterobacter uh, cloacae, which is intermittent sensitive to glycine. It was uh, uh, available post mortem. The blood gas analysis showed uh, uh, mixed uh, acidosis, which was m uh, metabolic acidosis and uh, respiratory acidosis. In cardiac markers, uh, CKMB was uh, 50, uh, raised to uh, 59 and tropite to more than 30, mm -hmm. and BNP was uh, 600 and D dimers was. Uh, 2310. NCCT had uh, showed right uh, practo occipital and so on. 
in uh, 2D co at uh, admission to CCU showed a global uh, left ventricular hypokinesia with severe LV systolic dysfunction with ejection fraction of 20 to 25 percent with mild MR uh, with LAD territory uh, severe hypokinesia more than RCA territory with uh, but no uh, air tear or clot or vegetation. A repeat echo was done uh, during when uh, on 26th of April which showed uh, 15 to 20 percent of uh, ejection fraction with mild uh, pericardial effusion, IVC was 1.8 centimeter. Patient underwent CARD which showed uh, proximal uh, LAD uh, which was uh, 70 percent stenosis. The uh, course and management. Patient had chest pain on 21st of April around 8 p.m. and uh, he uh, associated with shortness of breath. He was taken to outside hospital and where he was thrombolyzed at around 10.30 uh, p.m. and uh, do, followed by dual antiplatelets and anticoagulants were continued. Subsequently, a patient had uh, cardiogenic shock in outside hospital and was on no, uh, uh, noradrenaline and dopamine and oxygen therapy. Uh, patient 12 uh, left upper limb weakness one day into the illness which, uh, which was not evaluated uh, outside and uh, further uh, Two days into the illness, patient was referred to PGI uh, with, uh, with complaint of persistent chest pain and shortness of breath with left upper limb weakness and was al patient was also in uh, cardiogenic shock with dual inotropic therapy and oxygen therapy. For left upper limb weakness, NCCD was done which showed uh, right paractooccipital hypodensity, suggestive of infarct. Uh, uh, neuro consultation was done in PGI which uh, 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 told to have to continue dual antiplatelets and no active intervention was done from their side. In view of raised uh, TLC count, uh, uh, possibility of sepsis was also kept and uh, patient was started on piprasiline and targebectum. AKE patient had uh, on, on arrival patient had grad of 2 which, which was uh, AKE was pre-renal non-oligarchic managed conservatively and uh, uh, within two days it decreased, uh, decreased to 1.67. Now the court in a patient was sh shifted to CCU on uh, 24th with uh, chest pain and breathlessness persisted with cardiogenic shock on do dual inotrop with oxygen therapy with the uh, uh, possibility of sepsis with pre-renal AKI. And patient underwent uh, PCI with proximal LED stand on 25th of uh, April uh, after patient uh, patient was uh, off, I know, uh, patient improve, uh, BP was improving to 110 and 70 on 25th of April when uh, inotropes were tapered and stopped and then he was taken to PCI with, and the proximal LED stand was done after taking consult, uh, clearance from the neuroside. On 26th of uh, one April, that is uh, one day after the PCI, patient again had uh, 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 shock which BP dropped to 70 and 40 and he was again uh, started on uh, noradrenal and doputamin and f after four hours of resuscitation we, uh, because of persistent uh, uh, high, uh, B low BP patient was again added with the ad adrenaline and uh, oxygen therapy was continued with the ventrimax. Unfortunately patient uh, uh, had a cardiac arrest at around uh, 2, 2 a.m. in that on 27th of August so on 27th of April when CPR uh, patient was intubated and CPR was given but patient could not be revived. Now the uh, clinical database on history a 40 year male with no prior comorbidities with history of chest pain, shortness of breath, with left upper limb weakness and uh, sh uh, uh, shock on inotropic sport with basal, bilateral basal crafts with pansystolic murmur and left upper limb weakness. Uh, should we should skip to the discussion, transition. Now the discussion, basic disease complications and terminal events leading to death. In basic disease we had uh, uh, acute coronary syndrome with ST elevation MI with QRPBB. Uh, in anterior volume, we had uh, uh, suggestive chest, typical chest pain with ST elevation in V1 to V5 with QRPBB pattern with raised cardiac markers and eco short uh, LED uh, territory hypokinesia. Uh, uh, STEMI with uh, QRPBB pattern seen in uh, proximal LED, it is seen in uh, proximal LED occlusion. It ha has a, uh, carries a high mortality. It is associated with complications like heart failure, shock, arrhythmias more than in non QRPBB MI. This was the study done in uh, CMC Velour, which showed the, now the etiological possibilities can be hypercoagulable state because of the young age with uh, no risk factors for uh, ASCVD and uh, concurrent stroke with no family history of CVD or death, atherosclerotic uh, in view of stenosis of proximal LED on coronary angiography. The complications. 
uh, complications of MA can be uh, myocardial dysfunction leading to left ventricular systolic dysfunction, which can lead to heart failure. And the complications like cardiac rupture, cardiac arrest, stroke, and longer hospitalizations and ventricular arrhythmias. In a cardiogenic shock, we all had uh, basal uh, bilateral basal clefts with narrow pulse pressure with ejection fraction of 25% with ischemic uh, transaminitis, responding to diuretics initially and uh, in inotropes and diuretics initially. And possible causes of cardiogenic shock in our patient could be uh, left ventricular failure ventricular septal rupture, ventricular fever rupture, or papillary muscle. However, these were not uh, found in ECO. Stroke, uh, possibilities of stroke could be uh, embolic from uh, like a cardioembolic stroke because of extensive anterior wall MI or neural thrombus. Second possibility could be artery to artery stroke from the carotid artery atherosclerotic, uh, uh, atheroemboli can be there. And the thrombotic possibilities could be uh, atherosclerosis in situ and uh, hypercoagulability states. In acute kidney injury, uh, cardiorenal versus uh, septic was kept. Uh, in renal, we had uh, cardiogenic shock and pre-renal AKI. With septic, we had uh, raised TLC count, but it could also be in uh, MI, but uh, raised procalcitonin and blood culture positive. But uh, again, was, there was no uh, fever documented. Final diagnosis, please. Terminal event, uh, refractive cardiogenic shock, EF 15-20%, severe LV systolic dysfunction, ischemic hepatitis, cardiorenal syndrome type 1. And final diagnosis, ST elevation MI with QRBBB, post uh, thrombolysis with STK and this PCA2 proximal LAD, complications, cardiogenic shock, pulmonary edema, right preto occipital infarct, likely cardioembolic, and AK cardiorenal versus, uh, with plus uh, septic and ischemic hepatitis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please join me here. I would like Dr. Nuja to, for her final comments. She is not here. Uh, I would like further comments. Good morning, everyone. So in this case, we can see clearly that patient presented with uh, uh, extensive anterior wall MI. In spite of thrombolysis and uh, uh, proximal LAD standing, patient was in cardiogenic shock with Clip class 4, which is known to have a high mortality. And further, patient had other organ complications in the form of AKI and ischemic hepatitis, and uh, uh, some part of uh, sepsis also. So in spite of all uh, measures, then patient could not be salvaged. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, any further comments? From Sir, please. At 40, you may have a cardiac uh, issue that is not, uh, you know, uncommon. Had it been 20, 25, I would have probably said, you know, younger age group. Uh, needed a little bit more clarification on what was the alcohol consumption pattern or was there any other tobacco-related addiction in this patient? Because that could have hastened the atherosclerotic process. Uh, in a patient who has a severe LV dysfunction, severe cardiogenic uh, shock, was there any underlying basic cardiac illness if there was a history of alcohol consumption? On top of it, he had an acute MI and he had all the uh, issues. Uh, if I were to present this case, I would have presented it as an, you know, divided it into early complications post-MI and late complication post-MI. We had enough evidence in the uh, ECO and uh, along with the NGO that there was no structural, uh, you know, damage. There was no ventricular septal. So we shouldn't have considered them. And sepsis, I don't know why we always end up bringing sepsis in. You have a cardiogenic shock, you would have raised lactate, you would have, and raised procalcitonin is not an indicator of sepsis. Everything can be explained only by a cardiogenic shock. Jen, sir, for his final comments. Just wanted to say that uh, 40 is a new 20s and the 60 is a new 40. So, and uh, so it's a young MI for sure. and. Uh, this person has died, which is very unfortunate because in today's world, when the mortality has come down to maybe less than 5%, but it occurs usually in the first hour, so immediate uh, therapy is required. But the point is this, that uh, there are two issues. One is what are why the complications of MI. I believe that both the things are simultaneous rather than a cardioembolic. That's point number one. And number two is etiology, which I don't think you'll be able to answer on uh, pathology because th those are more of a uh, 
either genetic basis or but please remember just for learning sake that smoking is the single most reversible factor for younger man i repeat so i am very happy that at least the smoking prevalence has gone down which is across the world and that is to even in india thank you sir i would like to invite dr nopur for the topsy presentation dr sushmita sir good morning everyone i will be discussing the pathological protocol of today's cpc a complete autopsy was performed on his 40 year old male patient who was clinically diagnosed to have refractory cardiogenic shock anterior wall myocardial infarction ischemic cardiomyopathy and old cerebrovascular accident with a hospital stay of 4 days the disease was moderately built by temporal midline thoraco abdominal incision was given and the prosector at the time of autopsy noted that the pericardial cavity yielded 300 ml of hemorrhagic fluid uh, peritoneal cavity yielded 500 ml of straw colored fluid and pleural and pleural cavities were within um, normal limits as the patient has predominantly cardiac involvement i would like to start with heart these are the gross photographs of the heart taken in the fresh state the heart was heavy weighing 340 grams even in this fresh state we can see that this pericardium is thickened and is showing some glandular exudates over over it these are the uh, gross photographs taken after fixation uh, after fixation we can better appreciate the thickened pericardium and this fibrinous tags giving it a bread and butter appearance indicating uh, fibrinous pericarditis yes yes the heart was ovoid in shape with blunt apex over the near to the apex we can see some hemorrhagic lesions and a bulge was noted on the outer aspect the heart was dissected by four chamber method here we can uh, see uh, the right uh, right atrium right ventricle left atrium and the left ventricle uh, in the fresh state we can see that this transmural hemorrhagic necrosis of the ventricular of the left ventricular free wall uh, extending into the interventricular septum and also the right ventricle near to the apex there is loss of myocardium uh, and leaving a thin rim of uh, visceral pericardium and this hemorrhagic necrosis is also extending into the um, papillary muscles this is an another view showing uh, transmural hemorrhagic necrosis of the entire wall with a large intramural thrombus occupying the lumen uh, left ventricular wall thickness was measuring 1.7 cm uh, indicating left ventricular hypertrophy Mm. Uh, representative sections examined from the heart uh, we can see the lumen myocardium and the visceral pericardium in the same section here we can see that this large intramural thrombus is occupying the entire lumen uh, the myocardium is showing predominantly necrosis with few interspersed uh, viable myocardium and uh, uh, pericardium is showing fibrinous tags a uh, marshes scarlet blue stain was performed and it highlighted the blue fibrin and red rbcs uh, indicating that the thrombus uh, the thrombus is showing both fresh and uh, old fibrin uh, sections examined from the non hemorrhagic areas uh, showed various uh, ages of myocardial infarction in the form of uh, wavy eosinophilic fibers uh, interstitial edema um, Uh, myocardial necrosis along with uh, peripherally preserved myocardium without any significant inflammation this is the high power view to show the myocardial necrosis uh, um, there was also a prominence of neutrophilic inflammatory infiltrate with uh, myocardium with myo necrosis uh, few of the areas also showed presence of macrophages with early fibrosis which is highlighted on mason strychrome Uh, this table is highlighting the various uh, ages of myocardial infarction at different time intervals um, uh, our case uh, our case uh, showed the wavy fibers coagulative necrosis neutrophilic infiltrate and early collagen deposition uh, so the age of infarct could be around 7 to 10 days coronaries were dissected uh, the left circumflex and right coronary artery were dissected uh, multiple cesarean sections were taken at the interval of 5 mm Uh, however the left uh, anterior descending artery because of presence of stent we could not be able to cut through and it was sample longitudinally um, uh, 4 cm from the origin of the left circum- circumflex artery and 2 cm from the origin of the right coronary artery showed uh, occlusion of the lumen representative sections examined from the coronary showed presence of atherosclerotic plaques uh, 
uh, which were occluding the lumen to around 40 to 50 percent. Uh, however, these uh, plaques were unstable and showed ulceration of the lining uh, of the endothelium along with necrotic debris and neutrophilic inflammatory infiltrate with superimposed thrombosis which was highlighted on MSB stain. Uh, EVG stain highlighted the intimal hyperplasia. So thereby indicating that the myocardial infarction could be uh, because of uh, the atherosclerotic plaque rupture. Following which patient underwent uh, intervention uh, and we could see the stent uh, placed in the left anterior descending artery with a uh, superimposed thrombus which was uh, confirmed microscopically and was highlighted on a MSB stain. The sections examined from the uh, hemorrhagic area showed uh, hypercontracted uh, myofibers along with edema. This is the low power view showing diffuse uh, hemorrhagic necrosis. Uh, in this high power view, we can see the RBCs which are insuminating into the myocardial into the myocardial fibers, which was uh, highlighted on MSB as yellow RBCs and on Mason trichrome as these red RBCs. Uh, in addition, uh, there was completely wiped off myocardium with dense neutrophilic inflammatory infiltrate, uh, indicating reperfusion injury following intervention. Uh, summarizing the findings in the heart, patient has acute myocardial infarction of the uh, left anterior descending artery territory with reperfusion injury involving the uh, left ventricle, septum, right ventricle along with the uh, mural thrombi, indicating ischemia reperfusion injury. There was uh, presence of triple vessel coronary artery disease with complicated atherosclerosis grade 6 uh, showing unstable plaques in the form of ulceration and thrombosis. As a consequence of thrombus and also a patient had history of stroke, uh, I would I would like uh, next like uh, next uh, like to show the findings in the brain. Uh, brain was weighing 1460 grams, which was normal for age. This is the lateral aspect and this is the basal aspect of the brain, which uh, showing normal brain parenchyma. However, the arteries appeared firm and engorged. Circle of Willis was dissected and it showed presence of thrombus uh, in the vertebral artery, basilar artery. Uh, middle cerebral and the internal carotid artery. On coronal slicing, an area of softening and hemorrhagic uh, discoloration was noted in the parietal lobe measuring uh, 3 into 1 by 5, one, 3 by 1.5 centimeters uh, involving the middle cerebral artery territory. A similar infarct was also uh, noted in the occipital lobe. Uh, sections examined from the infarcted area showed um, liquefi liquefactive necrosis and breakdown of the glial matrix along with neutrophilic inflammatory infiltrate. Uh, this is the high power view uh, highlighting the neutrophils. Uh, the microcystic changes have also set in along with hypoxic changes seen in the neurons in the form of uh, small, uh, uh, small neurons with uh, dense eosinophilic cytoplasm and pycnotic nuclei indicating that the infarct could be of 2 to 3 days age. Uh, the meninges overlying the infarction also showed reaction in the form of macrophage infiltration and some neutrophils. Uh, the, these macrophages were, were highlighted on CD163 stain. Uh, these are the uh, panel of photographs showing the vascular changes uh, surrounding the infarcted area. Uh, the vessels were showing fibrinoid, uh, fibrinoid necrosis along with uh, a lumen showing fibrin thrombi and a plump endothelial cells. Uh, there were also the, we can also see this hypoxic neuron surrounding the uh, vascular vessels. Uh, also, the section taken from the uh, thalamic region microscopically showed presence of uh, infarct, uh, which is showing the central rarefaction and surrounding gliosis. The gliosis was highlighted on a GFAP stain. indicating that this thrombus uh, is of 3 to 5 days old. Summarizing the findings in the brain, we had fresh infarcts measuring two to three, uh, of uh, 2 to 3 days uh, duration in parietal and parieto-occipital lobe. Uh, infarcts were also noted in of 3 to 5 days duration in thalamic region and thrombus was noted in the circle of villis uh, involving the vertebral artery, basilar artery, middle cerebral artery and internal carotid artery. Coming to the next organ complex comprising of um, slice of liver, gallbladder, sea loop of duodenum, pancreas and slice of spleen. Liver was weighing 15-20 grams which was normal for age. The capsular aspect was smooth. The cut surface showed alternate dark and light bands indicating uh, nutmeg appearance. Uh, the pancreas and spleen were essentially normal. 
portal vein was dissected and it showed presence of thrombus uh, which was confirmed microscopically and was highlighted on the MSB stain. Here we can see that the, uh, the hepatic artery lying adjacent to the portal vein was normal. As we found uh, thrombus in the portal vein and there were also thrombus in the brain, um, we dissected the other vascular structures in the body and found that there were thrombus present in the pulmonary vein and also in the mesenteric vein which was uh, uh, are also highlighted on this MSB stain. Splenic vein was also direct dissected and it also showed presence of thrombus. Uh, coming to the uh, possible causes of the uh, venous thrombosis, uh, which can be acquired genetic or mixed. Uh, among the acquired causes, uh, patient does not have any uh, medical history, uh, was not under any drug intake and was not obese, not a smoker and was occasional alcohol in, and used to take occasional alcohol. Uh, so the acquired causes are ruled out. Among the genetic and mixed, uh, uh, mixed acquired and genetic causes, uh, uh, no anti-mortem workup was done for protein, protein C, protein S deficiency or factor V laden mutation or any uh, coagulation factor mutations. So the etiology of venous thrombosis in this case is uh, unknown. Sections examined from the liver showed maintained, lobul uh, showed maintained lobular architecture. Uh, this is the hyper view showing uh, central uh, hemorrhagic necrosis and uh, preserved peripotal hepatocytes. The reticulin um, uh, stain highlighted the maintained reticulin framework. Mason's trichum does not highlight any fibrosis. Pancreas was unremarkable. If there are no positive findings, please um, find them. Uh, lung showed presence, uh, showed presence of uh, pulmonary edema in the form of uh, this fluid in filling the alveolar spaces and capillary congestion. Uh, the tubule showed presence of uh, uh, acute tubular injury in the form of loss of brush borders and uh, loss of nuclei. Uh, the, the, the esophagus, stomach and the intestine were largely unremarkable, however showed uh, the submucosal congestion of the vessels. Final diagnosis please. So the final autopsy diagnosis in this 40-year-old male patient with refractory cardiogenic shock, anterior wall myocardial infarction, ischemic cardiomyopathy and old cerebrovascular accident is complicated atherosclerosis in the form of ulceration and thrombosis, triple vessel coronary artery disease, acute myocardial infarction involving the left anterior descending uh, artery territory with reperfusion injury involving the left ventricle, septum, uh, right ventricle along with mural thrombi thromboembolic infarcts in the brain involving uh, right parietal and parieto occipital region and also in the old infarct noted in the right thalamic region. Uh, venous thrombosis noted in the portal veins, splenic vein, pulmonary and mesenteric veins of unknown etiology. Central hemorrhagic necrosis noted in the liver, pulmonary edema and acute tubular injury. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Sushmita. Please join me here. Bella sir, please. This case should have been a staff CPC. There's plenty to discuss yes. in this because uh, I, I don't think it is a simple, straight, cut out student CPC case. Uh, uh, raises numerous possibilities now with the venous thrombus and the multiple. The infarct in the brain is not an old CVA, it happened after the uh, MI, so it is in. I'm interested in knowing was there any atherosclerosis in the circle of villus, or did you see any atherosclerosis in the, uh, you know, uh, aortic arch or any any other vessel significant? Because young patient, no history of smoking, only occasional alcoholism, and this. And uh, reperfusion in injury, I think, uh, would have been. Uh, again, intrigued, as you said that uh, even the uh, uh, even the muscles were, cordy were involved and the papillary muscles were involved. On eco and on angio, there is no mention. Although the clinical uh, resident has mentioned pansystolic mur murmur, but no mention of any MR or TR uh, if this patient was having significant... Uh, you know, involvement. Sir. Uh, fully agree with Dr. Balla. It should have been a, st a staff CPC, but we realized it only a few days back, and Dr. Uma couldn't get another CPC for a replacement. So I think we, she went ahead. 
Uh, as far as the brain is concerned, it is a frontoparietal infarct. It is correlates very well with the radiology. It's a fresh infarct. Uh, fresh and it is, there's no old infarct. What she meant was uh, the uh, anterior infarcts, uh, they are about three days duration, two to three days, whereas the one which she found in, uh, she has discussed in thalamus, maybe four days or a day, something like that. So there is nothing. But I think I got up to say that this is the blood vessels in the circular villus were normal, uh, no atherosclerosis. The only problem is, that you, as you have said, it raises a lot of questions now. What is the etiology? I don't know because the problem is that it is not only embolic. It was embolic, of course, but then there are vessels in the brain, smaller arteries, which also show fibrin deposition. So there, I believe that this patient had a predisposition to have uh, coagulation problem, whatever, whatever. So there were fibrin even in the vessels, which were uh, meningeal vessels, which were normal. So I think the etiology is uh, complex in this case, and as Dr. Jane has said, right from the beginning that uh, we cannot have all the answers. So, Just wanted to say one thing which is <laughs> may provoke Dr. Redotra and uh, Dr. Bella. Staff, what is there in staff CPC? The student CPC cannot do is The only difference is the time. And please remember the quality of a teacher is judged by the quality of a teacher is judged by the quality of the students he has produced. And I'm sure that my students are better than what I am. So the only difference is the time. That's it. All right, and happy Teacher's Day. Thank you, everyone. Happy Teacher's Day once again.